Welcome to Garden Oasis. My name is Sue. I garden in Zone 7A and today I'm going to show you how you can easily propagate creeping phlox. First, I'll briefly touch on what kind of plant creeping phlox is and its uses in the garden, just in case you're new to this type of plant. Then we'll do a quick overview on the various ways to propagate or multiply your creeping phlox, just so you're aware that the method shown in this video isn't the only way to propagate it. And finally, we'll get down to the business of propagating through hardwood cuttings. Creeping phlox is an evergreen ground cover that flowers in a dense flush in early spring. Its pretty eye-catching flowers are one of the first signs that spring has arrived. These flowers come in many colors from pastels to bright eye-catching ones to two-tone ones. You can be sure that there is one out there that fits your color palette. The rest of the year, when it's not flowering, it will be a carpet of green that suppresses weeds and keeps the soil cool in summer, eliminating the need for mulch. Though you can use it anywhere you have bare soil, many people use it in rock gardens or at the top of a retaining wall and allow it to cascade over as it grows. It's also great for use on slopes to prevent soil erosion. But like I mentioned, you can use it anywhere you like. From using it to underplant a tree, to growing it in place of grass, it's all up to you. The sky's the limit. Use your imagination. There are several ways to propagate creeping flocks. You can dig it up and divide it. You can propagate it through hardwood cuttings since it won't die to the ground like other summer flowering flocks, you can propagate it through softwood cuttings. The most popular of these methods for home gardeners, judging by the videos on YouTube, seems to be to dig up your current plant and divide it. So you take a large established plant and get two or three smaller plants. But I feel like that's more work than you need to do when you can easily propagate it without digging up or reducing the size of your current plant. I prefer leaving the parent plant where it is and taking cuttings. This way you can start with one, keep it the same size, and get 10 more. Once rooted, these 10 can be spread out in the garden to grow out. You will then have 10 more plants the next season to take cuttings from and get many, many more plants. It's a beautiful multiplication effect, and once you know how to do it, you will have more free plants than you know what to do with. As far as cuttings go, taking hardwood or softwood cuttings is slightly different in where you take the cuttings from. Since phlox blooms on last year's growth, you'll want to take the hardwood cuttings from unruly growth that's growing around the edges of your plant. After it's bloomed in late spring, you can take cuttings from the top portion. It will then have time to replace that new growth with more new growth during the growing season, which will then bloom the following spring. So now let's get into what this video is about, hardwood cuttings. Hardwood cuttings can be taken anytime after late fall when your plant has started to go to sleep all the way up to very early spring. It really doesn't matter when during this time you take the cuttings as they will remain dormant or sleeping while it's cold outside. So just sit there till spring arrives and the warm weather wakes them up. As long as you have soil that isn't so frozen, you can't get the cuttings into it, you'll be fine. Both hardwood and softwood cuttings will work equally well since phlox is a trailing plant. Its natural habit is to skip along the ground and root where its branches touch the ground. It naturally roots readily, so you'll have a high rate of success. It's early March and I still have two weeks till the official first day of spring and a full month till my last frost date. I'll be sticking the cuttings now, but like I mentioned, they won't do much till spring has sprung and everything is actively growing. It's pretty simple to take the cuttings. Your phlox will probably have some stringy growth around the edges. Cutting this back will accomplish two tasks. Your current plant will flush out stronger and replace the stringy growth with a denser flush and you'll have some nice cuttings to propagate more flocks from. So now that I have my cuttings, I'm going to cut them into sections. I could just stick each one into the soil and that would work, but cutting it into sections will give me more plants, so why not, right? As I cut it, I'm going to remove some of the bottom leaves of each section and immediately stick it in the soil because it's easier to remember which side is up and which side goes in the soil. On each section, the part that was closer to the parent plant is now the bottom and the part that was further away is now the top. You'll do this for all the cuttings and just stick them straight in the soil. You won't need any rooting hormone for phlox. Like I mentioned, it is in their nature to root wherever the stems come in contact with soil so they'll root readily without any help. Once I'm done, this container will be placed in a shaded spot either under my weeping willow or on the north side of my fence, where the rays of the sun will never touch these cuttings while they're rooting in. 
Here are some cuttings I propagated last year. I planted them out in the fall as the plants were going dormant. And since they've been dormant, they didn't put on any growth till now. They did look a little pitiful during the winter because they were so small. But I knew that as soon as they woke up, they'd fill in. It's early spring and my cuttings are already flushing out better than I could ever have imagined. Look at all that new growth they've put on just in the past month. There's still the rest of the spring and the summer for them to grow out. Here's some more still in the pot. If I take it out of the container, you can see the white feeder roots it's put out, indicating that it's in the process of waking up. I'll be finding a spot for this in the next few days. Normally, I'd wait to upload this video till these exact cuttings rooted in so I could pop them out and show you. But I think this video will help more people if I upload it now while those of you that want to try it still can take hardwood cuttings. I'll do a quick update when I see these particular ones rooted in and link it in the description just so you can see. And that brings us to the end of this video. I'll leave you with some examples of how others have used this plant. People are so creative. For example, in this one, someone has taken the creep in creeping flocks and made creepy flocks. I'd never have thought of it. I love it. Please feel free to leave a question in the comment section if I didn't explain something properly or you just like some clarification on something I said. Or leave a suggestion if you have a particular plant you'd like me to show you how to propagate. Don't forget to hit the like button. It helps with the algorithm. And follow for more gardening adventures. Happy gardening!